DNA is a molecule that contains two strands of nucleic acids. They are not physically bonded together, but they are held together with hydrogen bonds, which are a very strong attractive force. So the two strands are connected with hydrogen bonds. And much like what we saw for proteins, um, the connection, the hydrogen bonding between the two strands of DNA causes it to twist into a helical shape. We specifically call this a double helix because both of the strands of nucleic acids are twisted into a helix. So you have one strand of nucleic acid that's twisted into the helix, and then you have the second strand next to it that's also twisted into its own helix, and, and so we refer to that as a double helix. The hydrogen bonding that holds these two strands together only exists between specific base pairs, which is what we refer to as complementary base pairing. One option for complementary base pairing is adenine hydrogen bonding with thymine. And the other option is guanine, hydrogen bonding with cytosine. So to be clear on that, adenine can only hydrogen bond to thymine, it can't hydrogen bond to guanine or cytosine. Um, when adenine and thymine connect, I'm gonna look at a picture from your textbook um, so this is figure 22.4. Uh, here is a representation of adenine and thymine connecting. And we're calling this a base pair because it contains the uh, bases. Base is referring to thymine and adenine. And pair, obviously, because there's two of them. And so this is, the, this is the thymine base, and this is the adenine base over here. And they are connected to each other by hydrogen bonds, which are being shown right here. So this is the hydrogen bonding, and this is specifically where the hydrogen bonding occurs between adenine and thymine. And you'll notice that for these two, this particular base pair, there are two hydrogen bonds that hold them together. For guanine and cytosine um, up here, the hydrogen bonding that holds these two together, there's three of them that exist right here. So there's three hydrogen bonds. Notice that for both of these pairs, guanine and cytosine, as well as adenine and thymine, there's one purine and there's one pyrimidine that are holding them together. So you have one large base and one smaller base, and that pairing is necessary to maintain a consistent distance between the two strands in DNA. So the size, basically what I'm trying to say is the size of the guanine, guanine and cytosine pair together is the same as the size of the thymine and adenine pair together. And so the, the length of the pair is the same and that allows for a consistent distance between the two strands in DNA. Otherwise, it would get kind of um, bubbly, skinny in some spots and wider in other spots. So the adenine and thymine, as I said, uh, and also guanine and cytosine are called complementary base pairs.
And the way that we might use that notation would be to say, uh, what's the complementary base pair to adenine? The answer would be thymine. What's the complementary base pair to guanine? The answer would be cytosine. One, in, in um, the assembly of the double helix, one strand of the, D, of the nucleic acid runs from the five prime to three prime direction. And the other strand, the second strand runs in the opposite direction. And there's a couple different ways that we could represent that. So we could say, if we were trying to draw it like this, we could say one of them is running from five prime to three prime, while the other one, if I wanna to try to squeeze it in here, is running from three prime to five prime. But this notation gets a little bit cumbersome, gets a little hard to read. So typically we're just going to use this notation where we're writing them from left to right. So let's write a practice strand of DNA. Let's say C, C, A, T, G, A, T, C, T. So this would be a very small strand of nucleic acid. If this is one strand and we wanted to write the second strand that complemented it, we would want to write that strand in the three prime to five prime direction. And what we would want to write are the base pairs that are complementary to the original strand. So for example, our original strand starts with C and the complement to C is G. So our complementary strand would have a G to complement every C for the next, um, Next one over, we have an A. The complement to A is thymine, that's a T. And so this trend kind of just continues where we are writing for the complementary strand, we are writing the complementary base pair for every single nucleotide. We, um, we have a worksheet that we can use to practice writing the complementary strands for segments of DNA, which is what we're gonna do next.